Hi, Shashank. How are you doing? Shashank, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think this is the last test, right? What are we writing? After this, is there any test like in Epsilon? Ah, yes, sir. There's one more test. Okay, one more test. Okay. okay. So I don't know. No, Subhash should be joined. Okay. Fine. Let me share my screen. Maybe we'll just wait for maybe two more minutes. We'll see whether people are joining and then we'll start. Okay, I think we'll start. Uh, by that time, actually, let me download the question paper once again. Okay. Okay, now I can share the screen. Right, okay. So, fine. first question. Mention the various factors uh, affecting the rate of the reaction. So rate of the reaction can be affected by concentration of the reactants. Right. That we know, we know, you know, rate law. If the concentration changes, uh, the rate changes, right? Uh, next would be the surface area of reactants, right? The surface area of reactants, right? Third thing would be catalysts. Obviously, you know, catalyst will increase or decrease the rate of the reaction, right? Uh, any other factors? The nature, of the, the nature of the reactants. Right, in the sense that if I have gaseous reactants, that will be more reactive than liquids. Liquids will be more reactive than solids. Right. So these, I think, uh, any other thing, Prashant, you want to say? The temperature. Sir. Ah, obviously, yes, yes. That's a very good point. Temperature is also a factor. Yes, as temperature increases, the rate of the reaction increases. Okay. So these three, these five points will be the factors affecting the rate of the reaction. Next. Uh, describe briefly the nature of bonding in metal carbonyls. Now, metal carbonyls, right? Metal carbonyls are organic compounds which have uh, both sigma as well as pi bonds. Okay. Now, we will be representing this a bond like this M. This is the metal, right? And we have the carbon monoxide carbonyl, right? And we generally represent it like a double bond, right? Now, one of them is sigma, the other one is pi. Right. So whenever we talk about sigma bond, right, it is always going to be say metal will be there, 
carbon monoxide will be there. This carbon has a lone pair. That carbon at that lone pair will be donated to your uh, metal. That is normal sigma bond in normal uh, what you see in coordination chemistry. Normal coordinate bond. Right. In case of pi bond, what you need to understand is we have metal uh, having some electrons, extra electrons, right? And they will be donated to the carbon whose empty orbital. Right. This is your pi bond. Okay, so this is a sigma bond where the donation happens from carbon to metal, and in pi, the donation happens from metal to your uh, carbon, right? So here you should say that the metal is having empty d orbitals, right? And here you should say that carbon is having empty anti bonding orbitals. If you talk about molecular orbitals, here, if you remember, right, this is your empty, uh, empty anti bonding. Orbitals. Obviously, for coordinate bond, I need to have a lone pair and an empty orbital. So now this is going to be opposite in the case of sigma and pi in case of metal carbons. As simple as that. This is how you must explain the answer. Okay. Next. Uh, what is this? Uh, the complete synthesis of complete synthesis by the complete the synthesis by giving the missing starting material. Okay. Now they are saying that I am going. This is the reaction of nothing but ozone analysis. O3 in the presence of zinc in the heaven water, and you are forming two moles of the same compound. Right. Now there is a trick. Uh, I, I thought with this. Say if I go, if I have C double bond C, and I go for ozone analysis. Right. Now what happens? I told you to remember it like this. We will break the cis, uh, C double bond C and put this side oxygen, this side oxygen. So you'll be getting two moles of C double bond O. That is how it happens. Exchange your C double bond C with C double bond O, right? Now the exact opposite we can do, right? So now this is given to you, and they're asking you what is the compound, what is the alkene, <coughs> right? So now I can do the exact opposite. Say it's like this. Say I have the C double bond O, and I have the C double bond O. Now what you're going to do is you just remove this oxygen oxygen and make the double bond between carbon carbon. So it's as simple as that, right? Done. So exactly same thing we will do for this particular compound, right? So I can show you. I show you to be like this. Okay, we have a double bond O. Again, same thing. I can take this side. Okay. Now what do you need to do? You need to remove these two oxygen and combine this carbon and this carbon. So you will get double bond. Again, the same thing. Yeah, same thing. You will get. This is your starting material. And that's the answer. Okay, very interesting. This is a very small trick, exactly opposite trick of how we get the product. I do the opposite to get the reactants. Very simple. All right. <coughs> okay. So next question: Why is there no internal choice? How many marks are these? Thirty one marks. Okay. Fine. So next one is uh, half life of a radioactive decay uh, 14 carbon is this much, right? Uh, the archaeological artifact contain 90, 80 percent of the carbon 14 living tree. Estimate the age of the sample. Okay. Now this is uh, carbon dating, right? Remember that any kind of uh, you know uh, carbon dating or whatever it is, you have to go for first order equations. Okay. Right. So what we need to understand is we have this equation, right? K is equal to 2.303 by T into log of initial concentration by final concentration. Right? That is the equation we need to use. Right? Now, first we need to find the K value. Right? K value we need to find first. Right? For that only T half is given. So what is the equation? K is equal to 0 0.693 by T half. Right? Now T half is given 5730 years. You can keep it in years only, no issues. Don't need to convert into seconds or minutes or whatever it is. Just keep it in years. Okay, now we know this value, so k value is known. So take that k value and go and substitute it here. Okay, so now I can just do it. So we have 0 0.693 divided by 5730 years is equal to 2.303 divided by t. t is your age. Okay, t is your age. Okay, now initially I will have 100%. That is how we assume. Okay, in, in any case, so in all the questions of carbon dating, right, you must assume that the initial concentration was. Uh, 100 right now what they are telling finally only 80 percent of it are remaining right 80 percent of carbon 14 finding 500 in a living tree 
right? So obviously the final concentration is 80. Right? That's it. Everything is known. The only unknown value is the age of the tree, that is time period. You can easily calculate this. Okay, this is how you must do the carbon dating problems. Now, this is a constant thing in all the carbon dating problems. 100 is what you will do initially, 100%. Okay, and whatever the percentage is now, that value will substitute here. Find the K value and find the age. That's it, as simple as that. Okay. Next, uh, define the following with a suitable example of each. Okay, what is coagulation? Coagulation is conversion of a colloid into a precipitate. Right? What do you, what do you mean coagulation? It is the phenomenon of converting a colloid into a precipitate. Obviously, by adding an electrolyte. By adding an electrolyte. Okay, right? Fine. Next is uh, gel. Gel, I think, is a, a example. I think you have to give. You can look. I, I told you to look at the table, right? Uh, different different phases of um, this first phase, this first medium, and their example and the name of the colloid. Right. So I think gel is uh, this first medium is solid and this first phase is liquid. Okay. So examples you can see in your uh, textbook. Right? Okay. Multi molecular colloid. What are multi molecular colloids? Now you can find the name actually we understand one molecule is very small right one molecule is very very small so what happens so many molecules will come together so many molecules will come together that becomes a multi molecule now this multi molecule is big enough to be called as a colloid right so many molecules come together to make up a colloid right that is what is called as a multi molecular colloid okay right next Next question, which predict which of the following will be colored in an aqueous solution? Now, please understand for color that it's very, very, very simple, right? For color, only two types of D configurations will not have color. One uh, is D0 configuration, another one is D10 configuration. Okay, D0 configuration and D10 configuration, no color. Right. And other than that, if you have D1, 2, D9, all of them will be colored. That is the only thing. Very, very simple. And you have to give reason. What is the reason? Because when I have no electron in D, or when I have 10 electrons in D, you should tell that no D, D transition is possible. That is the A. This word, if you don't give, you will not get mark. No D, D transition is possible. This is how you must write. Right. Sir, so out of them, uh, sir, yes. But I have written that uh, Mn two plus and Fe three plus has uh, uh, has is colored because it has more number of unpaired electrons and undergo D two D transition. Is that fine? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you have to. I think uh, you have to check for the configuration of all of these. Whichever. Uh, yes, sir. Have... I did. Actually, yeah. uh, I have written that. Uh, uh, Mn2 plus and Fe3 plus has more number of unpaired electrons, so they are they undergo D to D transition, hence they are colored like that. Only for Mn2 mm -hmm. plus and Fe3 plus. Okay, well, uh, that that is uh, whatever DD transition you have done is absolutely right, but you have to check for the configuration of all of these and then check D0, D10 if it is there, then it will not be colored. That's it because DD transition yeah. is not possible. Okay, uh, I got D5 configuration, so that's why I'm. Ah, D5 is also fine. D5 will have five unpaired electrons. No issues. That will actually have maximum amount of color because it has oh. more number of unpaired electrons. Okay. Okay. Right. Good. Next. Uh, give example for the reason for the following phases of transition metal chemistry. Okay. The lowest oxidation state is basic and highest oxidation state is acidic. Okay. The reason for this. Um, Lowest oxidation state is basic. The highest oxidation state is acidic. Okay, let us check the solutions for this. Just give me a moment. Uh, stability, sir. Uh, uh, the stability no, no, no. play a role in that. No, 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 I don't think so. Just give me one moment. Let's stop sharing.
Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. What is given here is the lower oxygen because metal has and hence the metal has low charge density whereas uh, highest is actually due to high oxygen the highest oxygen state increases the charge density on the metal thus increases the acidity the lower oxygen of the metal some of the valence electrons in the metal are not involved in bonding hence it can donate electrons okay like that the higher oxygen state valence will involved in bonding and not have any instability on the and it can accept electron okay okay makes sense right so what i trying to say uh, let me share my screen again and <clears throat> right so what they're trying to say is see when i have lesser oxidation state when i have the lowest oxidation state right now what happens in lowest oxidation state say if i have so many unpaired i will have so many d electrons okay i'll have so many d electrons and out of that only some of them will be involved in bonding right because when i say lowest oxygen state say for example if i say m plus right so i assume that say i have six valence electrons or say five valence electrons uh, so i will write like this i had uh, five valence electrons okay now it became m plus right so obviously this will still have two lone pairs on this is it not now we know what is a lewis base right a lewis base is something which can donate an electron donate electrons is it not so since i have these lone pair present that can be donated right that can be donated right and that's why they are going to act as a base right but if i go for higher oxygen state say i go for m to m5 plus now that means all the five electrons are lost right all the five electrons are lost so this is actually going to have empty orbitals right and since it is having empty orbital it will be able to accept electrons and we know whenever some species accept electron they will be acting as a lewis acid right that is the reason so when i go for lower oxygen state there will be still electrons in the valence shell which are not taking part in bonding and so they can be donated and thus they can act as a lewis base and obviously when you go for highest oxygen state there will be almost no electron present all the empty orbitals will be there so they will be able to accept electron and thus they can be we can we can call them as lewis acids yeah it's a very acceptable explanation right okay next uh, the transition state uh, the transition metal exhibits highest oxygen state in fluorides and oxides obviously right it's because oxides and fluorides are highly electronegative elements and they will be able to take uh, they will be able to remove electron easily from the transition metals as simple as that okay next uh, the highest oxygen state is exhibited in oxo anions of the metal okay oxo anions why only oxo anions we'll see what are what are the giving multiple this. bonds sir. yeah yeah exactly that's what i'm thinking now uh, so you can see oxo metal what is it yeah oxo metal anions have highest oxygen state example like this like this uh, because this is due to this is due to the combination of metal with oxygen which is highly electronegative and oxidizing agents no right. now that is uh, this is a very little explanation only like i think the better explanation would be to give this and to tell that there are multiple bonds that's why okay right fine next Okay. Uh, next one. How the size of oh, how the given factors of affect the stability of the complex? Okay. Now we know size of the cation. Please understand size and stability are inversely proportional for a coordination complex. Now it is very easy to understand, right? Say when I have a very small cation, it can be easily surrounded by the ligands. But if I have a big cation like this, surrounding them will be very very difficult. Okay. Now it's very simple to understand. Isn't it? So when I have a smaller cation, that can be easily surrounded by the ligands, right? And also it will have high charge density. That is also there, right? When I have a smaller cation, it will have high charge density, right? And it can be easily surrounded by the ligands. But when I have a big uh, cation like this, surrounding the metal with the ligand is very difficult, and it will have low charge density also, and that's why the stability is less. 
Okay, that's why we say size and stability are inverse proportional. Okay, right. Next, size of the cation and charge on the cation. Obviously, now all it's all about charge density. How do we define charge density? Charge density is nothing equal to this, nothing but charge divided by size. Is it not? So I need to have lesser size and high amount of charge. More and more is the positive charge. More and more will be the attractive force between the metal and the ligand. Is it not? Higher positive. So much positive charge is there. So much ligand can be attracted, and obviously more, more and more density will come into the picture. Right. So you can even tell this here. So size is inverse. Inverse proportional to stability, whereas charge is directly proportional to stability. Right, because all we need is the charge density. Charge density to be directly proportional to stability. As simple as that. We know what is charge density. Charge by size. Okay. Fine. So that is about uh, charge on the cation. Next is nature of the ligand. Now we are talking about whether it is a strong field ligand or weak field ligand. Now we already know that uh, strength of the ligand is directly strength of ligand is directly proportional to the stability of the complex. Right, more and more is a more and more stronger the ligand is, more and more will be the uh, stability of the complex. As in plus, this has this you can prove by your uh, what is that um, crystal field theory, right? You know when the strength of the ligand increases, the del O del O increases, right? That way pairing will happen, and that makes the complex more stable. Okay, right. Next, explain with the help of an example in each case. What is this? Oh, you have to explain with all of example in each case. Say if you can take uh, uh, say size of cation if you want to measure. Say you take any any uh, magnesium complex. Say magnesium uh, complex if you take that will be less stable Mg two plus and you compare with Mn two plus. So definitely this has smaller size, right? And therefore de this will definitely be larger in size, right? So this will be more stable in making a coordination complex. Okay. Next uh, charge you can check. Right, you can you can go for maybe Mn two plus and Mn three plus. Right, now I can tell that this is actually going to have more stability in the coordination complex. Right, and say if you want to go for the uh, this thing, what is that? <clears throat> the nature of the ligand. Say compare your NiCl four two minus with NiCn four two minus. Right, obviously this will be more stable than this because Cl is a weak field ligand, whereas Cn is a strong field ligand. Like this, you can speak. Right. Okay. Next. Right. Write short notes on Rosenman reduction. Okay. What happens in Rosenman reduction? Rosenman reduction. Chloride reacts with hydrogen palladium catalyst yes. and barium. RCOCl. Yes. 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 Correct. RCOCl reacts with hydrogen in the presence of palladium. Poison with BaSO4. To form RCHO, that is what is Rosman Rosman reaction, and you can just tell it in the form of words. Just write the reaction, uh, give it in the form of words, and give one example also always. CH3, CO, Cl in the presence of H2, palladium, poison with the use of four to form CH3, CHO. That is a Rosman reaction. Okay. Next, Canizar reaction. You can tell Canizar reaction is a disproportionation reaction. I should not have any any alpha hydrogen present. Right, so you can give one example. Say I have benzaldehyde, right, and I go for di, uh, dilute NaOH. So now this is going to get oxidized. The same thing is going to get reduced. That's why we call it as a disproportionation reaction. Right, so we will have this to be COO minus. This is your oxidized form, right, and obviously you will have CH2OH, and that is your reduced form right that's how it is okay and then you can tell a few other points for can the reaction to happen i should not have any uh, alpha hydrogen it's a disproportionation reaction uh, the dilute NaOH is the reagent so on so forth all those things you can but okay right <clears throat> next question an organic compound a having c7h6cl2 on treatment treatment with NaOH Gives another compound, okay. This this one, right? 
be on oxidation with uh, be on oxidation with an acid C, which on treatment with a uh, mixture of concentrated HNO3 and H2SO4 gives a compound D. Uh, okay, be on treatment with concentrated NaOH. Okay, be on uh, NaOH gives a compound E and CC. Okay, fine, reduces up to the B and C. Okay, now for all of these questions, it's better to write the road map. Okay, so we have a compound A and that is having a formula C7. C7H6Cl2, right? And that on reaction with uh, NaOH, okay, that on reaction with NaOH is giving compound B, and that is not like that. having a formula is given. Okay, C7H6O. Okay, and then what is happening? And then B on oxidation. Okay. B on oxidation gives C and that is having C7H6O2, correct? C7H6O2, okay, right. And then uh, if you make this react with concentrated HNO3 and concentrated H2SO4, we are getting compound B, which is having C7H6NO4. Is it right? C7H5, okay, not H6. Okay, C7H5NO4. Okay, and then what is happening? This uh, B on treatment with concentrated NaOH. This B, this B on treatment with concentrated NaOH is, is giving compound E and F, isn't it? Or, you know, E only is there and then it is C6H5COONA. Okay, so E is having C7H8O. Is it? Yeah, C7H8O plus, plus we have C6H5CO minus Na plus. Okay, now this information is given, this information is enough for us to find what is the structure of this. Right now, can't you see? I am putting NaOH and I'm getting an oxidized form. This is your oxidized form, so this definitely should have been your reduced form. This reaction is nothing but Kanzero reaction, is it not easy? Right? C6H5 benzene ring directly you can see. Right? So C6H5CO minus how it will be looking? C6H5CO minus. Na plus. So can I predict this? What it would have been? Would have been this would have been CH2OH. Is it not? Right? Because I'm adding NaOH, I'm adding and getting two compounds. One is the acid part, another one is the alcohol part. It's easily easy to predict that this is indeed a, a you know, cancer reaction. Right? So E we found out. Right? Then definitely B structure can be easily found out. This is nothing but benzaldehyde. Right, and now if you go for oxidation of benzaldehyde, we will be getting the benzoic acid. Sir, one thing yes. I have a doubt, sir. Um, yeah. In C, in C, if C seven H six Cl two reacts with NaOH, will it give aldehyde? Coming to that, I'll come to that. I'll tell you how is it happening. Okay. Right. So now we have the structure of C also. Right. COH, and I go for oxidation of this, and this is nothing but nitration. Right, so obviously this is a meta directing group. Your COOH is a meta directing group, so you can easily predict that this would have been COOH, and in the meta position we would have had one NO2. That's it. So we have got B, C, D, E. Only remaining thing is A. Right now, I don't know whether you remember this reaction. When we have two uh, OH group on the same carbon, uh, there is okay. This is uh, one, two, three. Say CH two is there, for example. Okay, so whenever we have two OH groups on the same carbon atom, we know it is unstable, isn't it? Right, what you should do the moment you form two OH groups on the same carbon atom, now that has to, water has to be eliminated, right? So when you eliminate, what will happen? You will have H C double bond O H H C H O. That's what will come. Or if you are uh, doing it like this, say when I have R C H O H O H again, it is unstable. You remove this. All that is remaining is RCHO, that only is remaining. Okay, now that is what is used in this reaction also. Now, no, say, no. I should have, like, yes, what is it? Uh, it's like uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction, sir, because yes, yes. This, this, uh, this is nucleophilic substitution. 
So there's a benzene, there's a benzene ring there. So, so how can OH group be right. attached to Coming, coming, coming. So this should have been your A. Okay. Now please understand benzene ring in for, see, for example, if I have this particular compound that is chlorobenzene, this cannot undergo nucleophilic substitution. That is okay. But this chlorine is not attached to the benzene ring now. It is attached to this particular compound, this particular carbon. Now, this can undergo nucleophilic substitution. Are you able to understand? If the chlorine is directly attached to the benzene ring, no, it cannot undergo nucleophilic substitution. But if there is a carbon atom in between and there is the chlorine atom like this, then it can definitely undergo nucleophilic substitution. Okay, then if I put NaOH, what will happen? Both of the Cl and Cl will actually get. Uh, okay, CH, OH, OH. Again, if you remove the H2O molecule, you'll be ending up with this. That's it. As simple as that. Yes, it is it understood, Shashank? Is it fine? Uh, yes. Okay, good. So, that is, this is a very good question. Right. Okay, next. Moving on, identify A and B in the following reaction. Where are you A and B? Okay, we have NO2, we have NH2, we have Na in into plus HCl. No, that is not in the syllabus, not in the syllabus. This is diazonium salt, which is not there in the syllabus. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay, fine. Next, we have this one, CH3C. Yes, just for uh. I'm just a little curious. This is a uh, you would mm -hmm. get so, uh, alkyl halide, right? B. Yeah, you, B you will be halide. getting this one. You will be getting NO2 and Cl here. In the in the wherever I had NH2, that place you will get Cl. Okay, sir. Okay. Right. Fine. So next one is this reaction I have, and I go for NaCN is very simple. Now the moment I have NaCN, Cn minus replaces Br minus. So we will have CH3, CH2, CH2, Cn, right? And I'm going for LiAlH4. LiAlH4 is a reducing agent. Whenever we have cyanides on reduction, what will happen? It will convert CH3, CH2, CH2. Now basically this is C triple bond N, right? You just had hydrogen to this, hydrogen to this. So it will become CH2, NH2. That, that is the answer, A and B. A is cyanide and B is your amine. Okay, right, fine. So that is about this question. Next one is this. We have NO2 and I go for H2SO4 and SO3. This is basically your sulfonation. Okay, sulfonation means what? Uh, basically in this A, you would have got, and I know NO2 is a meta directing group. Please be very careful. NO2 is a meta directing group. So we will be getting SO3H here. Okay, we'll be getting sulfonic acid like this, nitrosulfonic acid, SO3H will be getting sulfonation. Okay, then I have Fe in the presence of HCl. Fe in the presence of HCl is again a reducing agent. Any metal in the presence of an acid is a reducing agent, right? So now what will happen? Obviously, this can be reduced to what? Whenever I have nitro group, that can be reduced to NH2 group, NH2 and SO3H. Okay, that is your answer. Sulf analic acid, we call it this one. Okay, right. So that is this. Okay, fine. Next, write the IPAC names. I think you should be able to do this. But um, any any specific questions here? You want to ask any specific thing? Because I think IPAC naming you should be able to do. Or you want to you want to discuss all the questions? I think it's fine. Okay, I think that uh, Shubhashini, any any particular question you have in this? Uh, one second, sir. I think. Uh, yeah. Sir, for a uh, palladium, uh, what is the last? Do any? What is the name of the metal? What is the metal? Palladium. Called? Here, I don't have palladium. Platinum is there. You're talking about platinum. Sir, so no, the first one. Okay, wait. I'll I'll discuss everything. Okay, no issues. It's not a big deal. It'll take only one one minute for me to solve everything. Okay. So I have uh, CO, NH3, six times Cl3. Okay. Now you easily understand that this is your cation and definitely this is your anion. 
Okay, now we know that we need to add, we need to put the I mean we need to name the cation first, and then only have to go for the anion. Again, now whenever we are going to start with the coordination sphere, that is when you whenever you are going to start with the bracket, whether it's cation or anion doesn't matter. We need to name the ligands first. Okay, right. So in this case, the ligand is amine. So we will write hexa amine. We need to put double m. Okay, hexa amine cobalt. Right, and then we have chloride, but the, we are missing one main thing. We have to do the oxidation states, and you have to write the oxidation state in terms of the the Roman numbers. Is it not? So we have to calculate the oxidation state. So let us keep CO as X, right? And ammonia is a neutral ligand, so zero, right? And easily you can easily understand if this is Cl3, the charge and the coordination should have been three plus because you would have gotten three Cl minus. Is it not right? So if I remove this, these three Cl's, obviously I'll be having three plus on the coordination sphere, right? So that will be plus three. So basically, cobalt is in its plus three oxidation state. So what's the name of the compound? Hexaamine cobalt three chloride. As simple as that. Okay, right. Next one is uh, okay. We have cobalt again five times Cl Cl two. Okay, we'll do this. So now extra, I have only five amines, and then I have one chlorine inside the coordination sphere. Again, if you check, you are going to get the same value of, uh, you know, the coordination. I mean, the oxidation number for cobalt plus three. The same thing you will get. Okay. So now I have five. Okay. Now we have two uh, ligands, right? Now whenever we have two ligands, you have to follow alphabetical order. Okay. Whichever alphabetically comes first, that we should name first. So we have amine and we have chloride. So obviously, amine will come first because A is there, right? So we have penta amine, no double M, right? And then we have chlorine, so it is chloride. Then again, cobalt plus three oxygen state, and then we have chloride outside. This is outside, right? So again, that's the name for the second one: pentamine uh, chloride, cobalt three chloride. Okay, right. Next, K three F C N six. Okay, now in this case, right? In this case, this is your cation, right? And this is your anion, is it not? So obviously, you have to name the cation first. So cation is potassium. That will directly write it. Okay. Now comes the coordination sphere. Coordination sphere. What I have again in the coordination sphere, we have to name the ligands first, right? So we have cyano or cyanido. As the ligand, so it is hexa cyanido. Done, right? Now iron, uh, or you should not write iron, right? Now you understand that whenever the coordination sphere is an anion, the metal name has to end with a t e. Be very careful with this. Cation, no problem. Cobalt means cobalt. Zinc means zinc, right? But whenever it is anion. Then we should remember that if it is anion, the metal name should end with A T E, right? Okay. First, let us calculate the oxidation states. Okay. Now this is K plus, right? And we have three such things. So definitely, if I remove these three K plus, the overall charge in the coordination sphere will become three minus. Obviously, if I remove the K three K plus, it will become three minus, right? Now you can easily calculate the oxidation state. X minus six. Why am I putting minus six? Because one is C N minus, and we have six such C N minus. Totally is minus six. Okay, is equal to minus three. So X is going to be in plus three oxidation. That is, iron is going to be in its plus three oxidation state. Okay, now how do we write this? Uh, for iron, we cannot write ionate. That is, that is real stupidity. This is absolute uh, stupidity. What we should write? We should write ferrate. Okay, hexacyanide, ferrate, and the oxidation state is plus three. That is how you must name uh, name this compound. Potassium. Hexa cyanide ferrate three. Sir, what if the anion has uh, uh, the anion contains like uh, metals like silver or gold? So what will be? Uh, okay, for silver, if you have for Ag, you will write argentate. Okay, for Au, if you have, you will write aurate. Au R A T. Okay, and if you have lead, but you will not get lead. If you get lead, you should write plumbate. Like this, you should write. Okay. Okay. Fine. So that is about this compound. Next one. 
is okay k3 okay same thing instead of cn all we have is this uh, oxalate c2o4 2 minus now remember that it's a, it's a bidentate ligand so for bidentate ligand we cannot use uh, di or tri or tetra penta we cannot use we need to go for bis tris tetris like that we should answer actually we'll go for this so we have k3 fe c2 O4 price. Let's see two O4 price. This is what we have, right? So again, starting with the cation potassium, right? Now this will have obviously three minus. If I remove this, that is easily understood. Okay. Now we have three oxalates, right? How do we write this? We should write tris oxalato. Right, tris oxalato ferrate. Again, if you calculate the oxidation state, it's very simple x minus 6. Why am I putting minus 6? Because it's 3 into minus 2. Is it not? This is 3 into minus 2 because it is C2O4 2 minus. Right, so again, you'll be getting the x as plus 3 oxidation state. So I am for ferrate 3. Now remember that this you have to use tris because it's a bidentate we get. Okay, that's the name of this compound. All right. <clears throat> Next, then we have K2 PdCl4. All right. Okay, so again, starting with potassium. Right, if I remove these two potassiums, I will be, I'll, I'll be having two minus on this uh, coordination sphere. So if I have to calculate is this palladium or platinum? Palladium, you know? Ah, okay. Palladium. Right? So now, since we have... Um, oh, but palladium, how do we write? I think it's palladinate. Hmm. Yeah, I think it should be palladinate only because we just write PD. Right? Okay. So we have X... Uh, uh, X minus 4. Why minus 4? Because we have Cl minus. Four such things are there. Will be equal to minus 2. So X will find out to be in plus 2 oxidation state. Okay. So we have potassium uh, tetrachloride. Why tetrachloride? Hope you understand. Four chlorines are there. And the name of the, name of the ligand is chloride. Next we have palladinate. Palladinate in plus 2 oxidation state. As simple as that. Okay. Right. The last one is this. Okay. Um, okay. So we have PT and H3. PT and H3 twice. Huh? PT and H3 twice. Cl and H2 CH3. Cl and H2 CH3. And then you have another outside CL. Okay. Okay, this is what we have. Now, in this case, this is your cation. So you can easily name this first. And then ligand has to be named first. Now, this ligand, you know what is the name? NH2CH3. What is the ligand name? So methanamine. Yeah, it's methanamine. Right? Okay. So now you can easily do this. So on the M, uh, this is C, this is A. So definitely alpha alphabetically, uh, amine will come first. So we have di, amine, then chloride, then methanamine, methanamine, or methanamine, and then we have platinum. Right now, I got to calculate the oxidation state. Right. So this is neutral ligand. This is also neutral ligand. The only thing is I have a Cl minus. So X minus one. Now if I remove this. Uh, Cl from this, obviously it will become plus one here, right? If I remove the Cl minus, the coordination spheres is charge will be plus one. So that will be plus one. So you'll find X to be in plus two oxidation state. So platinum plus two chloride. That is the name of this part of the question or part of the coordination compound. Okay. Right. So I think all the names, now it's a very good revision, right? All types of things are given to you. All types of compounds, however the names you have to give, it's given to you. Okay, right. Any other question? Specifically, you have any doubts anywhere uh, else? Sir, I have a doubt on my 
uh, I have three questions yeah. from my school papers. I have those doubts. Yeah. Doubts in them. Yeah, you can send me in yeah. WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, you uh, can send me in WhatsApp. Okay. I don't have any doubts, sir. Yeah, if you don't have any doubts, you can leave, Kana. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, uh, Sashank. You can send me in WhatsApp. I can look into this. Okay, sir. Uh, can I send it now or... Uh, after. Yeah, you can send it now or you can send it. Just tell, tell me the question. If, if I'm able to do it now, it's if I can do it now. No issues. Okay. So they have asked that there are two NH2 groups in semicarbazite. Okay. However, only one is involved in formation of semicarbazones. Okay. So That's what I have written is uh, that NH2 acts as a nucleophile. For the first part, I know, sir, but the second part, I, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. However, only one is involved in the formation of semicarbazones, that part alone. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So the thing is, the formula is like this. Correct? Semicarbazite? Yes, sir. Is it correct? Okay. Now we are talking about this NH2 and this NH2. Is it not? Yes. Now, you easily understand that this has a lone pair, this also has a lone pair, correct? But what you need to understand is, this is an amide kind of linkage, this amide kind of linkage, this lone pair is actually involved in presence of the carbon that will see double bond. So, this lone pair is not available. Right? But this lone pair is fully available to this nitrogen. And that is the reason why, say, when I have a C double bond O, we will take up this H2 only. We will take up N, N H2 like this, N H, uh, C double bond O, N H2. Now, this is not going to involve in the bond formation. It is actually the low. Because of the presence of lone pair on this, I'm going to have the bond formation happening. So, you'll remove the H2 O to form C double bond N H, N H, C double bond O, N H2. Now, this is why you must answer the question. Now, even though I have two nitrogens, right? Even though I have two nitrogens, the lone pair on the on this nitrogen is actually not available because it is involved in resonance. So, this particular lone pair is more nucleophilic. That's why you must write. Right? It is going to act as a better nucleophile and it is going to attack. This only is going to attack the carbon carbon. This is why you must write. Understood what I'm trying to say? Okay. okay. Sir, uh, one more question, sir. Yeah. Sir, so they have asked the chemical test between benzoic acid and formic acid. Benzoic acid and formic acid. Okay. okay and formic acid, right? H, C, uh, OH. Okay. Now, weirdly, weirdly, uh, ben this is your formic acid. Formic acid gives tolerance test. Right now, if you're asking me why, now look at this. We actually have a CHO here, right? But this doesn't have, right? So since I have the C double bond OH present, obviously the OH is there, don't worry about it, right? So since I have the CHO part present, formic acid is the only acid which will give positive test for tolerance. No other acid will give. Okay, when I give ethanoic acid, formic acid, benzoic acid, formic acid, the always the test we have to take is only tolerance test because Formic acid is the only acid which will give tolerance test. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's because that it has an a, a meth, uh, methanoic CHO. acid has an aldehyde group. Yeah, CHO is there. That's why it is giving tolerance test. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Next question. Any other question? Um, um, carb carboxylic acid does not give characteristic reaction of carbonyl group. Huh. Okay. Now that is very easy to understand. So we have, say we have the C double bond O, but generally since it has its OH, right? Since it is having its OH, right? So what is going to happen? Let me understand. So see, you have a lone pair here, isn't it? Now this lone pair is actually involved in resonance here. So what is going to happen? Say if I talk about, uh, you know, a nucleophilic addition reaction, say I have a normal C double bond O, Right, and I have a nuclear file, and this comes and attacks it. This bond breaks, and all those stuffs are happening. Right now, why is it happening? Is because this carbon is having a high amount of del plus now partial positive charge, is it not? But because of this resonance happening here, the partial positive charge is reduced. The del plus is very less here. 
Okay, so this is how you must write this question. Since I have this OH also to be present, the lone pair is continuously involved in resonance, and because of that, the carbonyl carbon, this particular carbon, the amount of partial positive charge is very less, and that's the reason why even though it has a C double bond O, it will not be able to give characteristic reaction of C double bond O. That is R D H of ketones. That's the reason. Okay, thank you. Okay, right. That's it. Any other question? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you.